Hi, this is Tavis Piatoli, sports dietitian. In this episode, we're going to talk about the role of carbohydrates for performance, how to choose the best options for your athletes. First of all, I want to talk more about what are some nutrition myths that are associated with carbohydrates. You may have heard a lot of different things from just different people uh, circulating, whether it's in social media, whether it's on the internet, whether it's from a colleague or someone else. I know in, in my 15 years of working at the collegiate and professional level with athletes, I've, I've heard a lot of different things on what people's perception is of carbohydrates. I've had coaches in the past tell athletes don't eat carbs when it's time to cut weight or you know, even watch their weight. And these are athletes that perform two and three hours of endurance and power activity a day. So one of the first myths that I want to really focus on is just low carbohydrate diets are effective for athletes and that's completely false we have not seen any research or studies that have shown where any type of low carb or very low carb or ketogenic diet which would be less than 20 to 30 carbs a day would be effective at increasing athletic performance we have still seen and have not seen any data to support that so that's one thing that we want to ensure especially with a wrestler these are high performance athletes that are putting in two and three hours of practice and then these are anaerobic athletes that are basically focusing on high energy systems they need carbs so we don't want to restrict the carbs as clint mentioned in the effective strategies for cutting weight there may be some places where we need to watch our carbs but we don't want to completely eliminate them. Just by eating carbohydrates, some people perceive it increases body fat, and that, and that is completely false. Body fat increases in a several different reasons. Number one, you have to have an increase in energy versus a decrease in energy output. So if you're consuming more calories that's then, then that's actually being expended, then or if you're consuming, you know, if you're basically energy in is greater than energy out, yeah, there's a chance that you're going to increase body fat. It also, if the quality of calories, which we'll talk about from carbohydrates and the quality of carbs are poor, and we're choosing very processed and sugary rich carbohydrates, then yeah, we have a chance to increase body fat especially if it's combined with energy in is greater than energy out or calories in is greater than calories out. And number three is you shouldn't eat carbs when trying to lose weight. And that's completely false as well because carbohydrates are needed. We need carbs in combination with, with protein as well as fat. Again, it's just if we're watching and controlling our calories and we're in the energy input is a little bit less than the energy output, then that's a safe way, as Clint mentioned, to lose weight. But you should not completely restrict carbohydrates when trying to lose weight because you're going to compromise energy and fuel when doing that. Let's talk about what are the functions of carbohydrates. So why do I need them? Well, number one, for the athlete's perspective, it provides fuel for the brain and the body. So, you know, we're focusing on student athletes that also need fuel for the brain to think, but carbohydrates are our primary source of fuel. They also enhance focus and concentration because they help with blood sugar stability. So we'll talk about the complex carbs shortly, but our complex carbs are needed to keep our blood sugar stable. There are certain carbohydrates where if you eat them, quick spike in blood sugar followed by a pretty quick crash, uh, that decreases energy availability but also it also decreases our blood sugar, which could affect focus, attention, and also performance. Number two is it delays fatigue and it provides energy to lasting competition. So obviously for the wrestler, the goal is to get through a match with sustained energy. You know, with a lot of adrenaline pumping, a lot of energy being used, uh, a lot of carbohydrate being used in the body because of the anaerobic nature of the sport, we need good quality carbs. And we're going to talk about that shortly. But these are carbs that are needed for sustained energy and critical for to consume pre-competition. We don't want to go into a match with no carbohydrate in the system, especially after a weigh-in. I've had some athletes that I've worked with that have not eaten those carbs. They've weighed in, they've made their weight, and they didn't have any food available uh, pre prior to a match, and they went in depleted. All right, the third piece of really what are the functions is to replace muscle or replenish muscle so protein can be used for growth and repair. So one of the things where carbohydrates are extremely effective is it helps speed recovery after a workout. So after a training session, after a match, obviously after a training session, you're going to burn a lot more calories in two or three hours in a practice, and your, your carbohydrate stores are going to be completely depleted. Your gas tank is empty. So it's important with carbohydrates and protein combined it enhances the recovery process. Carbs basically 
refill the gas tank. That's also known as glycogen. We store that in the liver and in the muscle. So I don't want to go too scientific, but that's where those areas get restored. We refill those areas. We, we refill the muscle where it is empty. We refill the glycogen in our liver where it's empty. You combine that with protein, that just speeds up muscle recovery because it increases the protein uptake into the muscle. So always after a workout, whether it's liquid or solid, you want some good quality carbohydrates, and we'll talk about what that looks like shortly. All right, so let's kind of get into what should I eat pre and post workout for my carbohydrates. Pre competition, we want more slow acting carbohydrates. You know, three to four hours before you look at this as like a pre game meal, you want things that are more sustainable. You don't want to have a blood sugar crash or a spike in a crash, and then, you know, you're really tired. You don't have that focus and energy during the match. So things like fruits and vegetables with oatmeal or fruits, veggies, oatmeal, sweet potatoes, baked potatoes, whole grain bread, and whole grain cereal. You know, a little bit of fiber, you know, some good fiber sources, brown rice, things like that, that's more sustainable. You combine that with a good source of protein and some healthy fats, uh, you have a good, good quality pregame meal. So that might be chicken breast, let's say with some brown rice, some peas or corn. You got good quality carbs, you got good protein that's lean. You don't have excessive amounts of fat uh, that takes a long time to digest, and you'll have good energy. Post-competition, this is where we want some fast-acting carbs. It's okay to have a little bit of sugar because you want to get that carbohydrate into your body quick. That's where it helps with recovery. So things like Fig Newtons and Nutri-Grain bars and our bagel or bread with honey, that's a great place to have something a little fast-acting, maybe a little more simple uh, from the carbohydrate side. Even things like chocolate milk has had nice research to support because of it combines fast-acting carb with protein. Gets that protein to the muscle quickly, helps that muscle repair, helps refill the gas tank. We have faster recovery. So let's talk about what's the quality of carbohydrate. We're going to keep this, this session pretty easy and simple for you guys. Uh, but, you know, you put good quality gas in the car, it runs well. Our bodies are just like a good fine-tuned Mercedes. You put good gas in it, it's going to run well. You put poor quality gas, it's eventually going to have some issues. You have to take it to get some oil changes. So this is going to help fuel the wrestler. So I'm going to make this really and, and put them in, in terms to where you look at this and go, wow, this makes a lot of sense. State championship carbs. These are the type of carbs you want for 70 to 80% of your diet. We talked a lot about these already in the pre-competition, things like fresh fruit and vegetables and sweet potatoes. I don't have to go through each of these. This is just to give you a, a guideline of what this looks like. These are slower acting carbs for better blood sugar control for sustained energy. You combine these with things like lean protein, chicken breast, fish, turkey, uh, lean deli meat, even some lean beef, like lean ground beef or maybe like a sirloin, uh, and also some healthy fats, olive oil, avocado, nuts, and nut butter, you got good sustained energy. This could be a peanut butter sandwich on whole grain bread, or it could be chicken, brown rice, and, and vegetables. So, Or in the morning, it could be fruit with nuts and a protein shake. So there's a lot of ways we can combine that. And we'll talk more in, in later sessions about just some sample meal planning. But this is where we want 70 to 80% of our carbohydrates coming from for sustained energy. Now we move into what I call district championship carbs. Not terrible, not bad. I don't like to list foods as bad or good. But these are just a little bit less quality when it comes to the quality of those carbs. These should be about 10 to 15% of the diet. White bread, more processed type foods that are a little bit higher in sugar. They're faster acting. Now, keep in mind, if you took white bread and put peanut butter on it, because peanut butter has fat and protein, it will slow that response down. So anything that you combine here with fat and protein will slow that bl blood sugar response. So if you want to have some waffles with eggs, that's completely fine, not a big deal. If you wanted to have a Nutrigrain bar with a handful of nuts, that makes it a little bit less, uh, has a less negative impact on blood sugar because you're combining it with some fat and protein that will slow that response down. But these are probably going to be better for you after a workout during a workout. So between and after a match or a practice, it's great to do that because it helps replace the glycogen really fast, that, that, that gas tank we talked about earlier, and it helps repair that tissue if you combine it with protein. But these are not things we want to be eating when we're sitting on the couch or just relaxing. These are foods we, we would probably better be better used for performance. And finally, you know, I call these miss the playoff carbs. Obviously, you look at this list and go, wow, these are all great tasting foods, right? Candy and donuts and cookies and honey buns and, and desserts. But this is something we want to limit to about 10% of the diet. Because if, if this is 50 and 60 and 70% of our diet, we're not going to feel good. We're going to feel pretty poor 
at some point. These are high sugar carbs with little to no nutritional value. So in the previous slide, you know, in white bread, you have, it's at least enriched. There's some nutritional value to that. In most of these foods, though, there's not a lot of nutritional value. It's just pure sugar. And in also a lot of cases, these are foods, some of these foods like a donut's fried in, in a processed oil or an unhealthy oil like soybean oil or peanut oil. These are things that are highly inflammatory on the body. So it causes inflammation. It makes recovery a lot slower. It makes digestion a lot slower. These would not be great foods to have pre-competition or a day before a match. Every once in a while, I would never say you can't have ice cream or you should never eat candy. There's a place for this in our diet. But again, this can be 10% of the diet. You know, this is something where if you want to have a piece of candy or some chocolate one or two days a week, not a big deal. But if we're eating this day in and day out, it's going to really take a toll in our body and probably limit our ability to improve performance and reach peak performance. So I hope that was pretty simple. I wanted to really keep that, that topic really simple uh, just to give you a good idea of what are some good carbs to have. Uh, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at tpatoli at mysportsd.com. In topic seven, I'm going to be talking about the role of fat for performance and really what are the good choices. And also be sure to check out mywrestlingnutrition.com uh, or mysportsdconnect.com. Uh, pick up a copy of Clint Wattenberg's ebook on performance nutrition for wrestlers. It is by far the best resource for coaches and athletes and parents to use, mainly to give you a lot of tools and tricks that we're talking about in these sessions, but also just to give you a great, great background on why nutrition is so critical for athletic performance. Thanks for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you in Topic 7.